Hi, I'm Zee Hussain, CTO of Ares Communications, and today I'm going to talk to you about the evolution of M2M. What were the early days like? You had telemetry. That was the phrase. It wasn't M2M. In the 50s and 60s and 70s, scientific data gathering, that was the key. You had one-way radios, applications from the aircraft industry, NASA receiving data from probes, Weather Bureau receiving data from the balloons that they launched to track the weather patterns in the United States. Not M2M, but telemetry, remote data gathering, very small, small scale, small number of units, etc. The first real applications that I would consider as falling into the camp of M2M were people applications for dispatch and safety. Dispatch from service personnel, taxi cabs, applications that required information to be sent and received from uh, vehicles out in the field, and of course safety, where the police used to use two-way radios to communicate between their uh, police cars and the officers who were out there in the field. Characteristics, again, like I mentioned, two-way radios, some data. Not a lot of data because it wasn't available. Eh, enough to be able to get the, the process kicked off of uh, deploying these kinds of applications, if you will. Now, what was needed to grow the network deployments for machine to machine as we know it today? Cellular. When it came along, you had handsets for voice, CDPD on the analog amp system for data, and the handset use expanded. Carriers increased the coverage, not only within cities, but outside cities. That's when the first business M2M applications arrived. Still wasn't quite called M2M in the mid-1990s, but it was what we know today as, as a business M2M application. The alarm and auto industry took tremendous advantage of this. We pioneered a solution on apps that many of these people used back in the mid-1990s, and they can stay in use for many, many years. There was a transition in the mid-1990s into the 2000s. Analog amps changed to digital cellular. In the late 1990s, TDMA was introduced, became GSM. CDMA was introduced, and that's still in use today pretty, pretty heavily by uh, uh, the cellular carriers. And there were new data transports, and that's the key here. There was a new transport service called GPRS, General Packet Radio Service. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these transports, such as 1XRTT or higher speed transports such as EVDO. There is information that's available on that. But the point was that there were new digital data transports available. And what is happening more in the late 2000s and, and more, uh, more, more recently today is the presence of short range wireless technologies such as RFID, Wi-Fi, near-field communications, or NFC. I'm sure you've seen the ads with handsets talking to each other when they're, when they're in close, uh, when, they, when you touch them together, basically. Today, the market is exploding. You have a large number of players who are providing connectivity solutions, applications, term is changing. It's no longer called M2M, it's not called the Internet of Things, because the concept of machine-to-machine -machine data has expanded beyond the boundaries of just one device communicating with a server or many tens of devices communicating with servers. But there's still a lot of confusion. And let me explain what I mean by that, why there is confusion in the marketplace. What do customers want? Customers have a need for information and data from remote devices, remote widgets out in the field, that can be sent back through a simple transport system back to their servers under their control to analyze the data. They want to be able to get information back and forth, control the devices, and make decisions ultimately. Unfortunately, what they get isn't a simple picture. What they get is massive confusion. Lots of devices, lots of uh, questions. Who are the radio suppliers? How do I certify my completed device? What antenna do I pick? I'm not going to go through all of these. But the point is that you need to solve this, OK? You need to find a solution. Eris' approach to doing this is to provide experience. With many M2M deployments, we partner with our customers. And the idea is that we can provide solutions that are targeted to the needs that they have for their application, their remote data gathering purposes. We provide unique solutions. We have to be flexible innovative and creative because customers have different needs. It isn't just a handset. It's a remote device that's gathering different kinds of information, more than connectivity. We have to have a consultative approach and provide an end-to-end -end solution. That's what we excel at. What are the experts saying for the future? Billions of connected devices. The Ericsson CEO says that by 2020, you'll see 50 billion connected devices. The Cisco CTO says the devices on the internet are already at a trillion or will be within the next year or two. 
ABI research says that by 2017, you should see over 450 million cellular devices being used for M2M. That's pretty phenomenal growth, and it has to be figured out. How do you get there? Because these are large numbers of units. Whether you believe a particular number or not is not important. All of them are large, and you have to be able to deal with that. There needs to be dramatic change. You have to eliminate complexity in products, in systems. Everything you do for machine-to-machine -machine applications has to change. You have to be able to scale your operations, manufacturing, installations, debugging your devices when they don't work out in the field. And you have to be able to analyze effectively. If you cannot analyze the information that these billions of devices are going to be giving you, then you have a problem. So you have to have new solutions, big data, cloud solutions, such as the kind that we're going to be deploying very shortly. The point is you have to change the way you do things. You have to design for billions of devices. You cannot design for a few devices or tens of thousands of devices. You have to design for billions. Well, what should that lead to? What is the best outcome going to be? M2M, which is now called the Internet of Things, is commonly understood. Everybody uses it, everybody needs it, everybody wants it. Just like the M2M, excuse me, the cellular handset industry. We will ask ourselves this question, how did we ever do without it? And that's what we need to get to from machine to machine. Leave you with a little final thought. We now have more cellular radios than people in the United States today. And in not too many more years, we'll have more M2M devices than people in the entire world in the near future. That's what we have to look forward to, an exciting event. Thank you. If you want more information, please give us a call. There's a phone number, and there's our website.